Uh, should we just kind of get into it, I guess? Yeah. All right. All right. Well, this is our presentation about the Shape and Sound Arts Academy. Uh, we have something prepared that we're going to go through to teach everybody all about it. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to figure out some stuff here. All right. So Shape and Sound Arts Academy. First thing, who are we? All right, this is how you say my last name. My name is Ben Pawlowski. Ben Pawlowski. Um, ben is fine in 99% in of occasions, um, but here's some information about me as well. I got my bachelor's in art education from, from Kutztown University in Pennsylvania. I got my master of arts in art and visual culture education from the University of Arizona. I've been working in the education field for over 15 years. I've taught at universities, public schools, charter schools, after school programs, summer camps, tutoring services, daycares, uh, Peace Corps, and, and as of last fall, I've, I've been teaching online. And that's kind of what a lot of this program is about. Um, I am an active artist. I create things in a wide variety of media and I try to exhibit and showcase and collaborate with other artists as much as possible. Uh, you can see more on my website. Uh, the presentation here has a link built in, but it is you, just benpalowski.com. Um, you can check out some of my work there, maybe a little bit more about my teaching career and otherwise, uh, but feel free to check that out. All right, and this is for my partner in crime. This is how you say his last name. It's a little simpler. Booth. Booth. So here is uh, Patrick Booth. Hi everyone, my name is Patrick Booth. Uh, I am representing the sound aspect of Shape and Sound Arts Academy. And I'm super excited about it because I love introducing students at a young age to different techniques about learning sound and learning musicianship and the, and the craft of improvising. And that's not necessarily something that we can get away with teaching at the public schools at a young age because of uh, the way that curriculum works. And so this is a great opportunity for us to shape a brand new uh, forward thinking curriculum for young people. Um, a little bit about my background. I have a bachelor's in music education uh, and performance from Central Michigan University and a master's in improvisation from the University of Michigan. I am also the saxophone instructor and uh, instructor of small jazz ensembles at Michigan Technological University. And um, that have been doing since 2016. Uh, I am an active international performing and recording artist. I've traveled all over the world and recorded um, records and, and given lectures on music and lectures on performance. And uh, that's really been one of the highlights of my life is doing that. And so this is a great experience to bring all of my teaching elements and my performing elements together and give something unique to uh, the young people of our area and also uh, from all over. Very cool. All right. And you can check out more of uh, Patrick's music on Bandcamp uh, if you want to find some, some good tunes to hang out to. All right. So what is the Shape and Sound Arts Academy? Uh, to put it simply, Shape and Sound Arts Academy is a visual and musical arts program designed for youth approximately ages uh, 9 to 14, but that will expand over time. It is a program built with flexibility and possibility with the mindset that the arts are a vital part of any education. Okay, um, some things that we aim for in our program, a program with sound structure as well as flexibility for a variety of needs. Uh, the, our lessons are designed and implemented, implemented by experienced educators and professional artists. And the program will provide opportunities to interact with a varied group of individuals from Marquette and beyond. All right. Um, as far as reasons why we are so passionate about art, there's lots of different studies that we can look to. Um, I, I'm providing this list here because it's pretty succinct and covers a lot. Uh, it's also by a great pioneer in the art education field, Elliot Eisner. Um, you know, I'm not going to necessarily read all of these out loud. You know, you're welcome to pause the presentation and check them out. Uh, but I do want to point at number 10 here for just a moment, the arts position in the school curriculum. 
symbolizes to the young what adults believe is important. Um, and I know a lot of you may be aware of, you know, kind of my situation and maybe why I got started with this program, uh, or at least what was the big push that made me get it rolling. Um, you know, the, the middle school here in Marquette has canceled their arts program. So there are some adults that are kind of signaling to our youth that maybe art isn't as important, but I, I know if you're interested in this program, you're, you're at least trying to find it you know, alternative ways of getting some art education in your child's lives. And we really, really appreciate that uh, extra care and attention that, that you're spending with us, okay? Um, all right, what will students learn? All right, students will learn how to use art to solve problems. The lessons built into this curriculum are designed to imitate challenges faced by a wide variety of professional artists. The lessons are full of connections to contemporary artists, popular culture, and a wide variety of concepts across other disciplines. Uh, students will often be faced with questions that do not have a specific answer, which is uh, a big change from a lot of their classes. Um, again, some you know additional specific skills that you can learn in our different programs. So you know we are called the Shape and Sound. Um, again, shape kind of representing our visual arts program, and sound representing our musical arts. Uh, portion of what we're providing. All right, so how does it work? Because it is kind of a new thing and it does require a little bit of explaining. Um, and you know, at, if at the end of this presentation, there's still things that don't quite make sense to you, by all means, reach out to us and we will try to clarify. All right, so Shape and Sound Arts provides six locations of learning. There will be lesson experiences that students can access independently. Coordinated peer interactions provided at least once a week. Weekly direct feedback on your work from experts in the field. Individualized learning tasks that push students to be creative in a wide variety of contexts. Weekly live lessons about a specific technique, idea, artist, movement, or event related to the creative arts, as well as monthly events that connect students with professional artists through movies, visual presentations, live events, gallery visits. Um, collaborative activities, and more. So what does that look like for students? Um, so if we have any of our potential students looking at this, I'm sure they're concerned about, you know, what are they gonna have to do? Um, and we are looking for students to basically participate in these four main ways. Um, and that what that translates to is about four hours of commitment per week uh, to get the most out of this program. Um, which is about 2.5 hours of art making and about another hour and a half of attending classes, uploading work, kind of, you know, participating in the Shape and Sound community. Um, you know, students can certainly do more than that, but we really kind of feel like if they're doing much less than that, that they're not going to get the full potential of the program. And we'll, we'll kind of break down each of these things a bit more to make sense of them, but we're looking for students to make progress along their cho chosen artist path, and we'll explain that a bit. Uh, attend one virtual class meeting per week, uh, complete one side quest assignment, and we want them to document their work. Okay, so make progress along, oh, sorry, there's one other note there. Um, like I said, yeah, there will also be uh, extra opportunities beyond these, but um, yeah, so make progress along their chosen artist path. The curriculum we have designed and provided uh, offers students some choice in their learning experience. Uh, so like professional artists, students must make choices about how to focus their efforts. Okay, um, so this is sort of a, a general map of what we're looking at for our program to work. So there's three different paths that a student could choose. So let's say your child just happens to be Mega Man. I don't, I don't know why your child is Mega Man, but uh, you can be an illustrator, you can be a designer, you can be a mixed media artist. So let's say they chose designer. They'll start on level one, which is the logo design unit. All right, so th with that, uh, and we'll take a closer look at one of these units in a second. Um, there will be some activities for them to do. There's a bigger kind of finished, polished artwork that they need to complete. And then once they beat that or uh, complete that level, they've got some choices. They can go to either of the level two units 
or if they're deciding, you know, the logo design wasn't as exciting for me as maybe one of these other path sounds. Maybe they saw a friend of theirs do one of these other units and they're like, I want to try that. So they could do any of these sort of four things. Students can revisit a unit. They can, you know, go back. You know, there's, there's lots of choice involved here. Uh, eventually there will be additional levels as well as additional paths, but this is kind of uh, the place where we want students starting at. As we get to know their styles and what they're capable of, there might be opportunities for like independent study or collaboration with another student. You know, since we are the Shape and Sound Arts Academy, we've talked about maybe a path that combines some visual and musical arts. Uh, we don't know what to call that yet, but um, that's something we're, we're definitely thinking about for the future. So yeah, we talked about all those different paths you could choose. All right, so let's take a closer look at a lesson. Let me go back to that as a link. All right, so this will bring us to on our website, shapeandsoundarts.com. This is under the art curriculum. Um, so in here, we can see our different paths and our different level choices. So let's say we're a student wants to be an illustrator, their first level would be character design. So for each unit, there is a whole web page of information and requirements and um, background knowledge that students need to complete that level. All right, shows you the supplies you need. Um, most of the presentations and sort of background knowledge that we'll be providing, we'll try to provide in as many different formats as possible. So like for example, this one, I'll just click on this. So that's going to be the regular Google Slides presentation. We have a printable PDF as well as a video of myself uh, narrating it. Ooh, get out of my way. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you on this page is you'll notice like at the bottom, I have a note here that eventually there will be a gallery down here to show the completed work of students. So this is one place that we will showcase students work is within the particular levels, but students will also have their own individual gallery that they get to curate, they can set up um, and we can help them with that. This is all just kind of made up students that I have in there right now uh, with some silly names and pictures of some work I had laying around. Um, but then within that is the student's individual gallery. All right, and again, they can set it up in the style they want. They can have a background. They could, you know, say a little bit about who they are as an artist. And we can set up the galleries in a lot of different ways. Right now, I set it up just by grade levels, but we could do it by groups of friends. We could add more galleries. There's, there's lots of different options for how we do that. Um, I will also point out we do have the music curriculum up here as well. And, um, and I, maybe I didn't touch on this as much before, but you know, a lot of the stuff that I'm showing you is from the, the art curriculum, but we are structuring the music curriculum in a similar way with the levels and, and stuff like that. In fact, uh, Patrick, do you wanna say any more about these paths? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, the three paths we have are improvisation, composition, and performance and musicianship. And a lot of them, are gonna be dealing with one very specific aspect of music creation. Um, and, but it's also gonna be about sort of the overall uh, aspect of being a musician and being a creative artist, because a lot of times we don't necessarily talk about that as much in um, public school curriculums. And so some of the things that we will talk about are um, our performance anxiety, uh, dealing with um, nerves, dealing with solo playing, uh, dealing with uh, spontaneous composition or improvisation. Uh, composition itself is not something that we, we teach in public schools, but it's something that is highly, highly valuable uh, in, in terms of learning uh, music fundamentals, learning music theory. Um, and so I'm super excited about what we have, what we have designed and it's obviously constantly evolving. Um, but the, the framework of it is, is really exciting for us. Cool. Cool. All right. We will get back into the presentation, uh, continuing talking about, so these are the things, these are the ways that students participate in the program. 
Um, so second thing we're looking for is then we want our students to attend at least one virtual class meeting per week. Um, so class meetings are an opportunity to interact with other Shape and Sound students. You'll share things we have been working on, participate in different activities, and contribute to discussion on a wide variety of topics related to creative arts. All right, so we'll try to get students established in a class as soon as possible so that you can get comfortable sharing your artistic work, ideas, and questions. Um, you might be in a class grouped by age, but it, most classes will probably be mixed ages. Um, and you know we want to work with families and be as flexible as possible. So if we have groups of families that have established a pod and they kind of have their children all kind of doing a similar program and they want to be together in this program, we can make that work. If you've got a friend, neighbor, cousin, uh, whatever, again, if, you, if you're trying to be in the same exact class, we will try to make that work. Uh, and on the other end of that, if you've got a sibling um, that is also in this program and you don't want to be in the same class as them, we get that. I had three brothers. Um, we'll, we'll try to make that work for you. All right. Um, and on certain occasions, we'll, we might mix the groups up on purpose to try to get you interacting with some different people, hear some different perspectives. Um, it, it, this is something that's a little bit easier to do in our context than it would be in a regular public school situation. So we are happy about that possibility. Um, most of these class meetings will be on Zoom, or at least that's the way we're planning for it right now. Uh, we like Zoom because people seem familiar with it. Uh, you can get the basic version of it for free. It's got some tools that are helpful for what we're trying to do. Um, but we are always kind of looking at what else is out there. So if we come across something else that we think will work better, we'll of course work with everybody on that. All right, third thing we're looking for students to do, complete one smaller additional assignment. There will be one a week that you have to do. Um, each week students are asked to complete one smaller assignment in addition to progressing through their chosen path. Yeah, uh, we We'll often refer to these as side quests. Um, sometimes students will have a choice, but sometimes we might ask you to do something really, really specific. Um, but these are meant to give students, get students thinking creatively in a wider variety of contexts, um, maybe in ways that you don't necessarily think of as artistic or something like that. Um, but yeah, here are, so this would be potential examples for the week of September 13th and students would get to choose. They could take five or more photographs of their favorite personal possession, spend 15 minutes or more drawing someone in your house while they pose for you, or rearrange the furniture in your room and take before and after photos. All right, so this would be an example of maybe something that people don't necessarily think of as like an artistic exercise, but it absolutely is. I, I love rearranging my furniture when I actually uh, have the time to do it, but uh, yeah. And the fourth thing we're looking from students is we want them to document their work. This helps us kind of keep track of how they're progressing, their pace that they're working at, and just um, keep everything uh, documented, all right? Which is a really important skill for artists of all types. Um, so we will have a Google Slides that they are just kind of continuously updating week by week. Um, they'll show pictures of what they've been working on as well as write a few sentences describing what they have been doing and their thought process. So like, for example, um, here are two slides that students might get. And I would already format them with questions I want to ask them, where I want them to put pictures and that sort of thing. Um, they might be similar questions each week, but they are, I will, chances are I will change it up um, just to get keep students on their toes, all right? Uh, so yeah, this is what it would look like beforehand, and then this is what a student might do with it. This is from my uh, imaginary student, Billy Frypan, and he has chosen the designer path. So it shows some of his early exercises that he needed to do. And this is in a visual journal that um, we will provide to students. We might be sending them out in the mail physically. It might be something that we just make it really easy to print out um, if you have access to that. But again, that's, that's something we'll try to be flexible with and, and work with everybody's situation. Um, so yeah, showing some pictures, answering some questions, and then with the side quest, again, formatted for it already, and then what they did. So the student uh, chose some headphones to take a picture of, um, and then answered some questions about it. And one of the reasons we like Google Slides, you know, it's, it's pretty user-friendly. We know uh, a lot of students have some familiarity with it, and it's really easy for us as teachers to leave comments and guide students in, you know, what we think is the most helpful direction. 
um, which is you know a big focus of this program. We don't have traditional grades, but we are organized to give like pretty constant feedback so that students are hearing not just a, a number score about you know what their project how their project fits a rubric not that we all won't have rubrics necessarily we you know we have expectations but we think you know some written out uh reactions to their work is a lot more effective than just a number out of 100. um so that was the four main ways that we're looking for students to interact but then there's some extra ways that they can interact if they are interested um, so we will have some weekly themed lessons. So this will be where I talk about a specific topic and just any student that wants to come can come. It might be about watercolors. It might be about a specific artist. It might be about a medium, whatever. Um, and then monthly events, it might be that we kind of virtually watch something together. It might be that um, I collaborate with another group of students and we do something together. Um, it might be that we get in touch with a professional artist and get them to talk to us and we can ask them questions. And then the, the third thing, which I don't think I've touched on at all yet, is the virtual studio time. So this would just be time set aside throughout the week where I will just be on Zoom, sort of like open office hours in a way, um, but it's, it's more oriented for students to be working on their projects. So it's just a nice thing if, if you need to work on something and you like the idea of knowing other people are working, are working on something, we can all meet in Zoom. You can listen to your own music. I'm available for questions. I'll kind of be working on my own stuff, but I, I'm there um, just kind of hanging out with students while they, they work on stuff. Little bit of socializing, but mostly quiet work time is, is what we're thinking about there. Um, and, and with that, you know, we are a program that we're, we're at least the way we are starting off is going to be uh, completely virtual. And we want to kind of highlight some of the advantages of that. You know, we're not trying to say that it's better than if we could be in person. Um, you know, obviously if there wasn't a pandemic still kind of going on, we would be thinking about more in-person stuff. But for now, and, and all of the unanswered questions, we were sticking with virtual, but anyways, um, in a virtual in this virtual zone, you have more control over your workspace. You can set it up how you like, listen to the music you want, and just kind of get a feeling of what works best for you. Um, there's you can have a flexible work schedule. If you want to do something more like the way you know the way I taught last year, students had art five days a week, fifty minutes a day. If that's what works best for you, you can still do that. But maybe a different routine works. I know for me, it kind of depends a little bit on what I'm working on. If I'm drawing, you know, I can work on it a little bit here and there. But if I'm doing something like paper mache or painting or something that is very material heavy, I, I like a good like two hour chunk of time to be working on it. Um, and you can kind of figure out what works best for you. Um, with this program, I'm able to give students a, an increased um, level of choice in the materials that they work with. Uh, you know, in a classroom, I'm not, I might not necessarily want, you know, some students working with clay and some students working with paint and some students working with marker. That's a lot of different things to put away at the end of a 50 minute class. But in this, you all have your own spaces and are going to be responsible young artists taking care of your own space. Um, we will be, of course, incorporating technology in a lot of what we do. Um, I know students are in a lot of situations are spending a lot of time in front of a screen already. So we're incorporating it, but we are being conscientious of that. Um, and in this situation, I think there's an increased um, opportunity to interact and collaborate with students, artists, and teachers that are further away. Um, I did a, a little bit of this this past spring when we were kind of rushed to be online, and I wanna plan ahead and do a lot more of that going forward. Um, some other resources that are on the site. There's a video library about, you know, some different methods of making stuff and we'll continually add to that. That's all original content from the teachers, eventually from the students that will be in the program. A uh, blog where we'll write about just kind of different things related to the creative arts. An opportunity section that talks about some things that students can get involved in art outside of our program. Uh, it might be a contest, it might just be some thing, big thing that is being organized nationally. Um, what's up there now is, is uh, a local thing to Marquette, uh, but we'll put all sorts of events on there going forward. All right, and with that, we are thinking about, um, you know, where we can be going into the future and how we can connect with the community. 
Um, one of the early ways that we are doing this, and this is actually kind of already in motion, uh, is designing these take and make activity sheets. So these are a collection of activities that people can do without a ton of materials, without spending a bunch of money. Um, and we will make sheets like this about once a month um, that can be just distributed in the community, whether you're in shape and sound or not. Uh, we have the Marquette Food Co-op has offered to distribute these through their resources as well as the Peter White Library. And of course, if students have another place that they would like to distribute these to, uh, we, can, we can work with that. Um, we're thinking about you know, ways we can coordinate with the different local entities to have students perform, um, unique art making opportunities, display their art in places, we can organize small field trips to local performances, museums, and artist studios to get unique looks at artists' work and process. This is another thing that is actually a little bit easier in our context than if we were um, in a regular public school. It's a lot easier to plan some smaller field trips with just a handful of kids than it is to try to coordinate something that works for the whole school and their schedule. Um, and we want to look at, you know, maybe providing artistic services to entities in the community. Maybe it's mentoring younger students, painting a mural. I don't know, there's, there's lots of opportunities. We wanna have big events, um, just some ideas of ones that we've seen other places that we think could make it happen here. Uh, you can look this up, there's the Cardboard Challenge. There's a, a, from a few years ago, there's a viral video called Kane's Arcade. Highly recommend it. You might need a tissue by the end of it. It's, it's, a, it's a tear jerker. Um, I've seen uh, about events uh, called draw-a-thons in different places where they just kind of cover the walls of a building uh, with brown butch butcher paper and just get a bunch of Sharpies and have a whole bunch of different drawing activities going on. And then we also just want to see how we can have a presence in different um, already established large events in the area. All right. Uh, how is our membership going to work? So we are trying kind of a unique approach with the pricing for this program. Um, we, we are going to have a sliding scale. So students can sign up for classes and pay on this basis. It, it can be between $25 and $100 because we want this to be accessible to families in all sorts of different budgets and situations. Um, and we want families that are able to pay more, under, we want them to understand that their money is helping this program um, hold up, grow, be the full potential that it can be, where we are just getting started off. Um, and signing, so signing up on a monthly basis gets students access to the online class sessions, artist path program, teacher feedback, monthly group watching programming, and other special events. And that kind of sums it up. So I know it's a lot of information in a little bit of time. Um, Patrick, do you have anything you want to add at the end of this? I just want to, you know, thank you, Ben, for putting this all together and and being such a good good coworker and co-collaborator and co-creative mind well, um, in the same way man yeah but i'm i'm just very excited to to see this uh start to get off the ground and and start running here very quickly so thank you thanks man i really appreciate that um yeah. and and with that I'll, I'll kind of extend a thank you out to our parents out there and and the students that are checking this out um it is a program in its in its infancy and we're really excited about the potential that it has um, we are sending out a survey along with this presentation that will help us kind of you know form some of the things that we're still figuring out you know we have a lot of experience as teachers we feel really good about the curriculum the curriculum that we can provide but we are starting a new program in the middle of a pandemic so there are some things that we are still figuring out and we want to we want to be as helpful to you as possible so it would really help us help you if you fill out that survey um and i guess that's about it if you do have any other questions please do not hesitate to reach out to us uh our email is shape and sound arts at gmail.com um check out the website there's an faq on there uh with some other things that might answer some questions but again if you if, don't hesitate to reach out to us. And I guess that's about it. Thank you very much, everybody.